And welcome back to the Midweek Mix here on your information station for all of Southwest Florida. It's a Wellness Wednesday time now. And do you take heartburn medication, the OTC medication, such as Prilosec? Well, you're going to want to keep it right here. We're going to let you know the little-known dangers of these popular pills that millions of Americans and, frankly, people all over the world take every day. Dr. Mark Ratner is with us, who describes himself as a prisoner of Prilosec. He says it wasn't until he landed in an emergency room with an irregular heart rhythm that he began to realize the serious side effects from popular medications that Americans use every day. Uh, They ran several tests on him. The only abnormality found in his blood work was a low magnesium level, which could have been corrected with basic supplementation. His long-term use of popular over-the-counter heartburn meds was the apparent culprit. Research shows that chronic use of both proton pump inhibitors, those PPIs for heartburn, or metformin, which is used to treat type 2 diabetes, can lead to low magnesium levels. He is here today to uh, speak with us and uh, just kind of give us the skinny on everything. I'm so glad you're here, Dr. Ratner. You say you experienced a medication-induced nutrient depletion that landed you in the ER. What is that and how did it happen? So what happened to me was that uh, about 20 years ago, I started taking uh, Prilosec, uh, which is uh, an acid-blocking medication. I had actually been complaining to a friend of mine who uh, was an internist and uh, about the heartburn that I was suffering really chronically uh, and had been for years. And he, he gave me some samples of Prilosec, which at that, at that time was a prescription medication. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know it's now available over the counter. So I started taking it. And if anybody, any of your listeners has ever taken one of these medications, you they'll know it's it's like you flip a switch. Your stomach acid production just goes to zero. And so your heartburn symptoms immediately disappear. Okay. The reflux doesn't go away, but because there's no more acid being produced in your stomach, you don't have any symptoms from it. Um, and so it was terrific. It was just great. And, you know, sort of uh, foolishly, I just stayed on it. And um, uh, I didn't realize, and I, I, it may not have even been known at that point, that when you completely block your stomach acid production, you then run into trouble absorbing certain nutrients from your diet. Oh. Um, and so what happened to me was oh, probably about five or six years ago, after having been on this medication for at least 10 years, um, I woke up in the middle of the night with uh, my heart literally just pounding out of my chest. I had developed an irregular heart rate and heart rhythm. And I, you know, kind of got rushed over to the emergency room. They gave me some medication, you know, through my intravenous. They corrected that problem. They ran some tests Mm -hmm. and discovered that I had a very low magnesium level. Hmm. And it turned out that the reason my magnesium level was low was because I had been taking, you know, Prilosec or the generic omeprazole for years. Okay, yeah. I wasn't absorbing magnesium from my diet. Wow. So you've been taking it for about 10 years. Are you still on it, Dr. Ratner? Well, so that's why um, <laughs> that's why I jokingly say I'm the prisoner of Prilosec. Um, and in fact, you know, I have an ebook that that I've written that's that's called The Prisoner of Prilosec. The reason I say that is because once you have been taking one of these acid blocking medications for more than just a few months, and your stomach has completely stopped producing stomach acid, if you then stop the medication, your stomach rebounds, and you get a a production of stomach acid that is like multiple times greater than it's supposed to be. Ouch. And it is misery. I I mean, you get get chest pain, abdominal pain, diarrhea. It's, you feel like you want to die. And um, if you go on the internet and you, if you put in a Google search, you know, getting off Prilosec or getting off Nexium, you'll find uh, many, many websites where people talk about things they've tried, um, different techniques they've suggest they're suggesting. It's near impossible. And so, I tried multiple times. Um, I was unable to stop. It was just really just too too difficult for mm-hmm. me. Um, so I still take it. But now what I do is to prevent. Uh, these deficiencies of nutrients that can be caused by this medication, I simply supplement uh, magnesium and vitamin B12, which is the other nutrient. It's magnesium and B12. Those are the two nutrients that Mm. um, being on a PPI uh, can really uh, cause problems with. 
Yeah, and this is such good information because I know a lot of our listeners take take those. You know, they're you know, OTC 20, now. Yeah, twenty million adults um, uh, take a uh, a PPI every day in the wow. United States. Yeah. So, so, Dr. Ratner, does this heartburn medication have other risks beside the low magnesium? Yeah, and the B12? it does actually. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it can cause loss of bone density over time, uh, mm. like what we what we call osteoporosis. Um, there's some. Um, relatively kind of questionable evidence. It's it's really still unclear, but it looks like there are some studies that suggest it can increase the risk of dementia mm. and increase the risk of, of uh, kidney problems, uh, renal failure, kidney failure. Oh. Um, you know, so the bottom line is if you have chronic acid reflux, heartburn, what, what doctors call GERD, G-E-R-D, right. gastroesophageal reflux disease. That basically means you're you're having heartburn like multiple times a week or almost, you know, sometimes these people every day. Every day, yeah. And there are diet and lifestyle steps that can be taken to try and reduce those symptoms. Um, so you don't necessarily have to immediately rush to uh, a medication, even an over-the-counter medication. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, the, you know, the ebook that I mentioned, which... Uh, we we kind of humorously call it the pri- the prisoner of Prilosec. It really does, though, focus not only initially on kind of the story of what happened to me, but also those diet and lifestyle steps that you can take oh, if cool. you're suffering with acid reflux that can uh, potentially help enough so that you don't need to go to medication or any kind of oh. interventional procedure, because there are actually procedures that gastroenterologists do. Really? Uh, which which can, yeah, I mean, they're, oh. they require, you know, anesthesia and, and they're sort of semi-interventional oh. kind of invasive procedures, but they can stop reflux that way. But that's sort of, you know, that's like when everything else has failed. Yeah, that's invasive. Um, yeah. Okay. Sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. So the ebook covers those diet and lifestyle management tips, but also it's for people who are stuck like me. <laughs> um, and if you can't get off the, the PPI, uh, you know, what should you be doing to protect yourself? Okay, uh, where do we get the ebook, yeah. Dr. Ratner? I want it. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a, it's a download. I think it's ppihelp.org. Okay. ppihelp.org uh, is where you go, and it's a free download. And, Great. Um, it's an it's, it's a amazing thing because this is such a commonly used drug now, um, and it's, uh, it's a problem that not, not many physicians know about even uh, to check for. Okay, so, great, great. Yeah. This is great information. If you're just joining us, welcome. Thanks for listening. It's the Midweek Mix and a Wellness Wednesday. We're speaking with Dr. Mark Ratner, um, describing himself as a prisoner of Prilosec and actually has an ebook out. Um, we'll let you know if you're just joining us where you can get that for absolutely free download. So you mentioned, Dr. Ratner, about you know taking the OTCs, um, the PPIs that you're describing. You mentioned with that you landed in the ER because of a low magnesium level. Right. How, how do we get that tested? Is that something that's tested in our yearly annual physical? Not, you know, it's, it's not a difficult test to get. It's just another box that they would check off when they draw your blood. Um, mm. And so it's, it's simple to get, but it's not part of a routine uh, checkup that, you, you know, if you're getting um, oh. uh, kidney functions, liver functions, your cholesterol, maybe your vitamin D check. Typically, magnesium is not going to be included, but certainly anybody who is taking uh, one of these acid-blocking medications, uh, or actually there's another very common medication that can cause magnesium and B12 problems as well, which is a medication called metformin, uh, which Mm -hmm. is taken for type 2 diabetes. Anybody who is taking either metformin or a PPI Mm -hmm. um, should definitely be getting their magnesium levels checked. Well, I'm glad I asked because it's not included in the annual. We have to request it from our doctor then. Okay. Absolutely. That and a B12, yeah. Okay. Well, you answered my next questions. Are there any other pills that cause that? So you said the metformin does too. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Metformin is the the first line medication that's used for patients diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Um, That means these are, uh, this is not the kind of diabetes where you have to take insulin. Um, This is typically... Uh, treated with initially with weight loss and dietary management, um, and then uh, if you need medication, it's it's pills. Um, okay. uh, but metformin being the first one, it's been around for 40, 50 years. It's a great drug. I mean, it's it really works well to control blood sugar. Okay. Um, but again, it blocks 
uh, those same two nutrients from being absorbed, okay. magnesium and B12. Um, so, All right. So you mentioned that in your ebook, you talk about lifestyle changes, diet changes that help support people um, such as you and I and millions of others, Dr. Ratner, that have, uh, you know, GERD, the heartburn. You mentioned sure. about, I, I want to dive in a little deeper about some of those that, that you're doing. Can you increase your magnesium levels from eating certain foods? What have you changed for yourself? I'm curious. Well, the problem, the problem with the medication, what the, what the medication does is it blocks the ability of the, of the stomach and the intestines to absorb magnesium from food sources. And so as a result, um, what you really need to do is supplement with extra, extra amounts of magnesium in highly absorbable forms. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really the key in terms of, uh, you know, how you can overcome those drug induced nutrient depletions. Okay. Um, there are foods that are rich in magnesium, but you, you just couldn't do it by dietary means. Uh, you okay. really do have to take it as a supplement. Same thing with vitamin B12. Um, vitamin B12 especially. Most of the vitamin B12 we get in our diet comes from uh, meat. It comes from protein mm-hmm. sources, uh, meat protein sources, which is actually also why vegans, people who are on exclusively plant-based diets, um, have to supplement B12. Okay. Um, the reason why the acid-blocking medications um, cause a B12 deficiency is because you can't release the acid is necessary to release the B12 from the protein in meat. And if you can't do that, you're just not going to absorb it from your stomach. Um, okay. And so you need to take it, the B12 as a supplement. Okay. So you say supplements. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah. do most doctors advise taking supplements if you are using those two medications like we discussed, the PPIs, the metformin? And how would you start that conversation with your doctor if he or she is not knowledgeable about supplements? What do you suggest? That's a great question um, because, um, uh, you know, honestly, uh, if a doc is not necessarily informed about a particular problem, there is, um, uh, we, some doctors jokingly call it NIH syndrome, not invented here. Uh, <laughs> and I'm, 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 not, I'm not familiar with that. I'm not aware of that. And so it doesn't really exist, does it? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And so it's a delicate uh, discussion to have. You have to say, look, doc, I've, I've read that uh, people who are on this medication that I've been taking for years um, are prone to uh, getting a low B12 or a low magnesium. And can I get that checked? Um, okay. And that's probably the best way to start the conversation. Yeah. Okay. That sounds, that sounds doable. So what about the FDA, Dr. Ratner? Have they, have they come out with any, um, recommendations? What do they have yeah. to say about oh, yeah. these medication? Yeah. Any well, health warnings? Um, so for instance, metformin has a black box warning. Um, What's that mean? Metformin. It, it means the FDA, the FDA came out with a, uh, um, a warning. They, they put a heavy black box around it in a, on the product insert. So it's always been called a, a black box warning, but um, whenever they do that, but basically people who are on metformin, um, if your doctor is prescribing metformin to you, mm-hmm. then he or she uh, has been instructed by the FDA to check your magnesium levels. Oh. Um, yeah, so the FDA is on top of that. I mean, they've made that recommendation. The problem with the PPIs, though, is that 70% of people who are taking them now are not doing it under a doctor's care because they're available over the counter. So it's very, you know, if you go to the drugstore and you buy omeprazole um, over the counter, mm-hmm. you can't buy more than a 14 day supply. Really? The, yeah, the FDA will only allow a 14-day supply to be packaged. And on the bottle or on the box, it says, do not take this product for more than 14 days. Um, mm. But, you know, people do. Every, yeah. People do. I do. <laughs> so, um, you know, once you're on it, like I said, it's, it's really d- difficult to get off of it. Mm. Um, and that's the problem with the PPIs because most of them are being taken really outside of a, of a physician's supervision. Okay. Yeah. This this might sound like a really silly question, but what causes heartburn? Is it something you get as you get older or do young people have heartburn? What young do you people, know? Young No, you're absolutely right. Young people can have it also. Wow. And so so 
the the tube that leads down from from her mouth to her stomach, which is called the esophagus, where where the esophagus, that food tube, meets the stomach, there is a ring of muscle. It's a circular muscle. We call that a sphincter mm -hmm. muscle. And when your stomach is full, um, that sphincter muscle is supposed to stay closed tightly. As food comes down, the food tube, as it goes into the stomach, that, mm -hmm. that round muscle opens up. It lets the food go into the stomach, and then it's supposed to close tightly. But if that sphincter muscle has lost some of its tone, in other words, if it's loose, what happens is the contents of the stomach are able to easily reflux backwards up into the esophagus or food tube. Mm -hmm. And it can go all the way up into your throat. I mean, people who have bad heartburn will tell you when they lay down at night, they mm. get a burning sensation in right. their throat. Um, and so that kind of points to one of the tips that, that we talk about in terms of uh, the lifestyle management. And that is um, you can try actually putting some six inch blocks under the head of your bed. If you elevate the head of your bed um, so that you know, you're, you're kind of slanted, you're sleeping in a bit of a, at a bit of a, an angle, mm -hmm. um, you can reduce the amount of reflux that you're getting uh, at night. Um, and so when you have one of these weak muscles, sphincter muscles there, um, uh, the, the purpose of the acid blocking medication, it doesn't do anything to tighten that muscle. It's just that because the stomach is no longer producing acidic uh, content, you can't feel the reflux anymore. It's still happening. It's oh. still going up, oh. up, the tube, up the food tube, but it doesn't, you know, you don't get the burning sensation. <laughs> and um, so then we talked about the fact that there are techniques or procedures that the gastroenterologist can do, but what they're doing is they're actually going in and trying to tighten that muscle. Ah, okay. And, that was my next question. Stop. Okay. To stop the block, you know, to stop the uh, the, the uh, contents of the stomach from refluxing backwards up the tube. Would you ever consider doing that? I've read a lot about them. I've tried to educate myself about the pros and the cons, and and um, the short answer is at this point, no, I'm not okay. planning on doing it. Um, they don't work perfectly. Um, when you read the studies about how effective they are, I mean, they're all FDA approved procedures. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they have maybe 60 percent, 70 percent efficacy. Um, okay. And there's always risk, you know. Sure. Never, never, never let a surgeon or interventionalist tell you that uh, a procedure is without any risk at all. There's always the possibility. Sure. So, no, I'm not planning on that. Again, we're speaking with Dr. Mark Ratner, um, describing himself as a prisoner of Prilosec. This has been... So educational. If you don't mind, I want to ask you one last question. Sure. You talked about propping up the head, uh, you know, the head of the head of the bed at night. I, I I can see that helping for sure. What about stopping eating earlier oh, in the day? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So that yeah, when you lay down, one of it's the other tips okay. We, we recommend sure. Um, you want to stop. You don't want to eat for several hours prior to bedtime. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing you can do is sort of try to keep a food diary. Um, to see which foods uh, and which sort of things that you're taking in may be kind of worsening things for you. Um, okay. And it kind of helps to write those things down. We do know things like alcohol and uh, high acid foods like tomatoes can sometimes mm -hmm. uh, be uh, common culprits. Um, but uh, and again, in the in the in the ebook, we kind of go through all of those things. Oh, great. Uh, great. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Once you have heartburn, maybe if you stop eating spicy foods, you stop maybe drinking alcohol as much, which can contribute to that. Can your stomach heal itself? Can it ever be reversed back? Um, hmm, sorry. Yeah, you know, I, I think there are people who can control their symptoms okay. adequately enough uh, to where they feel comfortable. Um you know, they're really, it's, it's not as if there's bad damage being done to your stomach, although the food tube, you know, people who get uh, acid reflux uh, chronically, meaning, you know, over many, many years, um, that acid will start to damage the lower part of their food tube, and it causes a condition called Barrett's esophagus. Mm. Um, and Barrett's esophagus uh, is something that can only be diagnosed with, you know, scope. You put a scope down in okay. your mouth and you look at the food tube. So a gastroenterologist would do that. And it's important to know whether or not you have Barrett's esophagus. If you've had chronic heartburn for years, 
you should see a gastroenterologist to rule that out okay. because a small percentage of people who develop Barrett's, somewhere in the order of 2 or 3%, will go on to develop esophageal cancer. Right. So mm-hmm. it, it's, um, it's the kind of thing that, yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, it sort of can make you miserable in terms of not being able to eat certain foods. Um, but there can be some significant health consequences as well. Okay. Uh, so if you have chronic heart, anybody who has chronic heartburn should discuss that with their doc, should not try to you know, medicate themselves on, in the long term. Okay. Well, this has been so wonderful. Dr. Mark Ratner, the author of Heartburn, Acid Reflux, and GERD, What You Need to Know. I also see you're the chief science officer at Therologic. So where can we find out more about that? Um, Therologics.com. It's T-H-E-R-A-L-O-G-I-X.com. Mm-hmm. Um, is, uh, that's the company where I'm the chief science officer. But in terms of getting the, uh, you know, the kind of like the information about people who would, who have acid reflux and GERD, mm-hmm. um, that's ppihelp.org. Okay. So it's just ppihelp.org. Uh, or, you know, for people who are taking metformin and want to know kind of how they can stay out of trouble as well. I think uh, that's metforminhelp.org. Wonderful. I love what you're doing, and thank you for helping us, uh, you know, the, us people that uh, also uh, suffer with this condition. You know a lot about it, don't you? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> I learned the hard way. You learned that's the hard way. Thing. Well, I'm glad yeah. you're okay, and best of luck to you, and thank you. I, I'm so happy that your, uh, your your books are they're free e-books, so we can get yep. both the Metformin and the PPI. So thank you so much for being on the show today, you're Dr. Welcome, Ratner. Carrie. Thank you for having me. All right, you bet. Take care of yourself. Dr. Mark Ratner, and that was so wonderful. I hope you learned. I know I did. Again, you can log on. It's ppihelp.org and then metforminhelp.org. Thank you so much for being here on the Midweek Mix. We'll be right back to wrap up the show coming up next.